The software code began killing people with machines back in 1985. A typical single therapeutic radiation dose is up to 200 rads. 1000 radians is a lethal dose. The rebellious machine gave a dose to defenseless earthlings of 20,000 rads. Let's consider a case where a step-by-step, -step, but not coordinated implementation of software improvements led to a systemic error. The worst software error in history. In Act 25, the hardware protection was removed and the security functions were taken over by the software. How was the investigation conducted? What should IT system designers, programmers, and testers get up to in order to prevent something like this from happening? Killer. Therac 25 is a radiation therapy machine, a medical gas pedal created by Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, a Canadian government organization. Assassination. Between June 1985 and January 1987, the machine caused six radiation overdoses, with some patients receiving doses of tens of thousands of rads. At least two died directly from overdoses. The nurse recalled that she had replaced the X with an E that day. It turned out that if done quickly enough, overexposure was almost 100% likely to occur. While prosecuting cases against AECL, the Texas State Attorney's Office turned to Nancy Livson, professor of computer science at the University of California, Irvine, as an expert to investigate. She has made significant contributions to computer security. Nancy and Clark Turner spent three years collecting materials and reconstructing events related to Therac 25. This result is important because in most security incidents the information is incomplete, inconsistent and incorrect. Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, hereafter AECL, a Canadian government organization, produced three versions, Therac 6, Therac 20 and Therac 25. The 6 and 20 were produced jointly with the French company CGR. The partnership ended before the Therac 25 was designed but both companies still had access to the designs and source code of the early models. The software code in the Therac 20 was based on the Therac 6 code. A PDP-11 computer was installed on all three machines. The earlier models didn't need one because they were designed as standalone units. The radiation therapy technician adjusted various parameters manually, including the position of the rotary dial to adjust the operating mode of the machine. In the electronic mode, deflecting magnets distributed the beam so that the electrons covered a large area. In the X-ray mode, the target was placed in the path of the radiation, the electrons striking it to produce X-ray photons aimed at the patient. Finally, a reflector could be placed in the path of the gas pedal, with which the X-ray technician could aim the radiation precisely at the patient. If the reflector was in the path, the electron beam was not triggered. On Therac 6 and 20, hardware interlock mechanisms prevented the operator from doing anything dangerous, say, selecting a high-power electron beam without an X-ray target in place. Attempting to activate the gas pedal in the wrong mode triggered fuses and shut down operations. The PDP-11 and associated equipment were built in for convenience. A technician could enter a prescription into the VT-100 terminal and the computer, using servo drives, would automatically adjust the rotary dial and other devices. The hospital staff liked the fact that the computer set everything up faster than a human. The less time it took to set up, the more patients could be seen in a day. When it came time to make the Therac 25, AECL decided to leave only computer control. They abandoned the manual control devices and the hardware locking mechanisms. The computer had to monitor the device settings and, in case of malfunctions, had to cut off power to the whole machine. At least four errors were found in the Therac 25 software that could lead to overexposure. The same variable was used both to analyze the numbers entered and to determine the position of the turntable. Therefore, the Therac 25 could have been dealing with an incorrect turntable position, race condition, 
when entering data quickly through the terminal. Setting the position of the deflector magnets takes about 8 seconds. If the radiation type and power parameters were changed during this time and the cursor was set to the final position, the system would not detect the change. Dividing by the value of the radiation, leading in some cases to a division error of zero and a corresponding increase in the value of the radiation to the maximum possible. Setting a Boolean variable, one byte, to true was done with the command x equals x plus one. Therefore, with a probability of 1 slash 256 when pressing the set button, the program could miss information about an incorrect disk position. Potential bugs were identified there was no synchronization in the multitasking operating system. Corrections All interruptions related to the dosimetry system stopped the procedure rather than pausing it. The operator was required to re-enter all parameters. Added one-click software shutdown. Added independent one-click hardwired shutdown. Coded error messages were replaced by meaningful ones and current exposure level was displayed. Added potentiometer which defines position of rotary dial. Changing the position of the disk and other parts of the unit is now possible only when the operator holds a special pedal, dead man switch. In X-ray therapy mode, the deflecting magnets for electron therapy are set in such a configuration that they deflect the electron beam by 270 degrees. The manufacturer reported that the software and hardware have been tested for many years. However, upon disassembly, it turned out that the software had been tested with a minimal number of tests on the simulator, and most of the time the entire system was tested. Thus, unit testing was neglected and only integration testing was performed. There was a naive assumption that reusing code or a boxed product would increase the security of the software because of the duration of their successful use. Code reuse does not guarantee the security of a module in a new system because its design has its own peculiarities. Rewriting from scratch allows you to get a simpler and more transparent system, and as a consequence, a safer one. In this case there was a reuse of the program code from Therac 6 and Therac 20. The Therac 6 had no X-ray therapy at all, the Therac 20 used a mechanical interlock. After the Therac 25 accidents, the FDA changed its mind about a lot of safety-related system problems, and especially about the software. As a result, the FDA launched a process to improve its procedures, guidelines, and reporting system, and to include the software. This lesson was important not only for the FDA, but for all safety-critical industrial systems. Conclusion The Software Engineering Institute says the average number of one bug for every 100 lines of code and 98% of device failures that occur due to bugs in the software could easily have been avoided with the proper level of code testing. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.